usually referred to as a ghost, a pennant garland is not exactly a dead woman's spirit. It is rather a witch which has the ability to take form of a being which appears as a floating disembodied woman's head with its trailing organs still attached. They attain this state through meditation in a pot of vinegar. Penangalan is just like a normal human being otherwise. Only at night, they hunt for blood just like vampires. Women who practice black magic follow a certain ritual if they want to become a Penangalan. They submerge their entire body in vinegar except their head. Because of this, they always carry a strong odor of vinegar wherever they fly. They turn back to normal during the day, which is after they return back from their hunt at night. It is very easy to differentiate a Penangalan from other normal human beings because they always carry this strong scent of vinegar. The story goes that Penangalan was once a woman who devoted herself to a demon and worshipped it day and night to get the ability to fly leaving her body behind, which means her head, neck and the vital organs would fly out in the night looking for a prey. There is also another version to this story which explains her being as a result of a curse because she broke the pact which was made with the demon. There is yet another story in which a young woman who was taking this ritual bath in a vinegar filled tub with her body fully immersed except her head was startled awake by a man who walked in. The woman is said to have moved so quickly out of shock that her head came off along with the entrails that got pulled out of her neck opening. She got so furious that she flew after him like that trying to hunt him. Victims of Pen and Gallen are usually pregnant women or mothers who have given birth recently or newborns. It is believed that she hides under the stills of the house and preys on new mothers with her long tongue. And whoever she feeds on contracts a disease so fatal that it is impossible to escape. Even those who come in contact with the fluid dripping from her ends up with painful sores that can be healed only with the help of a local shaman. The locals are known to wrap vines with thorns to the windows or they stick sharp pieces of glass to the areas through which they think a penangalan could attack or enter. This is done specially when they have a pregnant woman in the house or a newborn baby. A penangalan would avoid entering such areas because the thorns or the glass pieces might damage her organs which are exposed. As an extra measure, pregnant women are known to keep either scissors or betel nut cutters under their pillow as Penangalan is afraid of these items and would stay away. To kill a Penangalan, one must destroy the body that she's left behind by either sanctifying and cremating it or by pouring glass shards into it through the neck cavity which will damage her organs when she tries to attach herself back to the body. It is also possible if one can entirely prevent from the head attaching itself to the body before sunrise. Now that's a challenging task, isn't it? The legend of Penangalan is not just famous in Malaysia but also in many other places. She goes by different names and her story varies from place to place. But one thing is constant, she's always hungry. The legend of Penangalan still instills fear in people in most remote and rural areas. Most agree that this is a spirit that should be avoided at all costs. The last thing that one would want to see is a floating head with its organs trailing behind. Hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please don't forget to click subscribe and the bell notification. Please take care and have a lovely day.